most welcome guest. My name is Virginia and I'm 25 years old. I, today I want to introduce myself. Today I want to introduce myself as a young adult that's just starting out in life, someone who's constantly learning. I recently graduated from Florida Atlantic University and I have a dream. No, I'm not quoting the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but I have a dream of my own. My dream is to become a doctor of osteopathic medicine, a medical director of a local fire department, as well as an instructor at a medical school. I know this is ambitious, I know, I know. Trust me, I, I wish I could be a cook or even a ski instructor, something easy. But with the help of my community, my friends, my family, and even strangers, I formulated this. I put this together myself. And today I want to talk to you about three people that have made an impact on my life towards this decision. The first person, I don't really know her name to this day. And I met her in a very awkward circumstance. I used to be an office manager for a local animal shelter for three years. And at the time, we were moving from one office to a, new, a, a larger, newer one. And on my way back to pick up some files, it started pouring rain. And as I entered into the parking lot, I saw a woman face down next to a puddle and it's pouring rain. I immediately got out and I said, ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? I didn't know what to do. She grumbled a little bit and said, my purse. I said, ma'am, it's right here. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Looking around, see if there's any blood anywhere. And there wasn't. She slowly started picking herself up and I helped her. As I looked up, there was medical staff that came to our house, her aide, and we helped her over to that doctor's office because that doctor's office had happened to be a couple doors down from my old animal shelter. I asked around and said, is there anything else I can do? Mind you, my car is turned on, door open, radio blasting, and my purse and my cell phone, everything's in there. They said, no, we can take it from here. And I said, okay, fine. I started running back to my car, and when I got in there, I thought to myself, what could have happened to have made this person lose her balance, or even her consciousness? Maybe some underlying health issue, diabetes, Alzheimer's, high blood pressure, I'm not sure. But at that moment, I knew that my passion for veterinary medicine had turned into a passion for medicine for my fellow man. The next person I want to talk to you about that's made an impact on my life is a two-year-old male that I still to this day have not been able to formally introduce myself to, and I, I won't. I was a student at the Coral Springs Fire Academy, and I was taking an EMT course. On my very first ride along with the fire department, on my very first call, the dispatch um, assigned us to a possible drowning of a two-year-old male. And I knew that as a student I wasn't going to do much, but I was just going to sit back, learn everything that I can, soak everything in. And they gave me the task of holding a Brazo bag. And that has a tape, and that tape measures a pediatric patient, wherever the height lands, there's a color assigned. And in that bag, that is where all equipment, syringes, needles, tubing, everything that that patient might need at that emergency moment, what they need is going to be in that bag. So I did that job, and I did it really well. I sat back and just learned. We took the patient to Northwest Medical Center, and I sort of stood back because I didn't want to get in anyone's way. I didn't know enough. So my firefighter paramedic that was in charge of me said, hey, Virginia, why don't you stand right over there? And I said, okay. Try not to touch anyone, move anyone, not say anything, not make a noise. I realized that I was standing at the foot of the bed of the patient and right next to the doctor calling the orders for this code blue. Code blue meaning the patient has stopped breathing. About 20 to 30 minutes later, we lost our patient. I lost my first patient. The next person I want to talk to you about is someone that I met two weeks ago on a retreat to better myself. And he was a priest. And he did work in Panama with a community over there. And one day they decided to throw a party. And they actually wanted to have soda pop there because that was a treat down in Panama. Not everyone gets that like we do here. So um, in order to get to the location where there was a soccer field and picnic tables and everything, they had to cross this bridge. And all the locals and everyone, all the parishioners just ran through the bridge as if there was nothing. And this priest being about six foot tall, 50 something years old, is not that that's old. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but because of all the work that he's done, he's aged a lot quicker than most people. <laughs> and um, he said, you know, I can do this. So he starts crossing the bridge. Mind you, it's made out of boards. It's very simple. The rails are made out of rope. And his seminarians, which are priests in training that were with him, decided to play a practical joke. They started swinging in the bridge while he was in the center. 
And he grew frustrated, scared, terrified, impatient, all the above, until one of his fellow priests went over and said, Father, don't look back, don't look down, just look forward and you'll make it. And at that moment when he said those words, I started to evaluate my life. As a child, I was always one of those kids that sort of, you know, took a step down and made sure that the floor was sturdy. I've never <coughs> taken a risk in my life. I've never had a leap of faith. Nothing like that. And at that moment, I said, you know what? In order to make this dream that I have that's so ambitious, I need to change all that. I need to take a leap of faith. I need to take a risk. So I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, but all I know is I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look down. I'm going to look forward. And like the great writer Maya Angelou once said, all great achievements require time. And I'm going to take as much as time as I need to. And believe it or not, I want to let you all know that you guys have made an impact on someone's life, at least someone's life in this lifetime. And if you don't believe me, thank you so much for being here and listening to my speech.